listening to Micah and Alyssa on Birds and Swords. Please like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and smash that like button. What's up, everybody? Birds and Swords, back on the grid. Uh, what's going on, Alyssa? Not much. Not much. Happy to be back. Yeah, always. So just me and Alyssa tonight, um, and we're going to talk about a few random things. First of all, how are the birds? The birds are good. They're really good. Always causing mischief. <laughs> what's the latest mischievous story? Uh, today, they got into the recycling and tore it up. They're pretty much free roam. Like when we're home, they can walk around and do whatever they want. And I tend to not really pay attention to what they're doing. And sometimes they just get into, they got into the wall once. Our walls are hollow. And the, I guess it's common that animals can go from apartment to apartment between the walls. So our maintenance guy told us that a snake got into somebody else's apartment once. That it was someone. So is there a hole? Is there yeah. access in your? Yeah. There's like a big gap where the wall should meet the floor. And it goes up into the wall. It's hollow. Okay. Animals just love it. Our, our neighbor's cat got into the wall and they had no idea how. And they like busted a hole in it. How old is that building? Um. Oh, I read about this in the elevator. Um, <laughs> it is. It's. It was built in the 1960s, I want to say. Okay, that's what it looks old like. Old building, but like everything's new inside. What are they doing in the recycling? They're just hungry? Yeah, they're always looking for a place to nest. So they're like, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that makes sense. Do they like people food? Yeah, they love people food. We have a lot of pictures of them, like trying to eat our food while we're eating. Um, they especially love uh, the goldfish crackers. That's a fan favorite. What about uh, chicken nuggets? They, yeah, they love chicken nuggets. They love, it's a little morbid, but they love chicken nuggets. Okay, so there's uh, this video and we'll post it in the Facebook group. Is that okay if we post it in the yeah. Facebook group? Yeah. So there's this um, candid video that Zach, uh, that was on last week, Alyssa's boyfriend, uh, he took a candid video of Alyssa without her knowing, and were you just having a bad day? Yeah, or? I had a horrible day. I was crying and eating chicken nuggets and feeding them to my bird. Yeah, they're sharing. It's this real genuine moment of her sharing her uh, chicken nuggets with which bird? Merlin. Merlin. Um, it's really sweet. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll post that because <laughs> it's really, it's really funny. Um, anyway, so, um, let's talk about what we're playing. Uh, we were talking about this when I went and picked you up a little bit, but we tried not to talk about it too much. Yeah. A lot of silence. Um, right. So <laughs> last time we checked with you a couple weeks ago, you were playing Persona 5. So are you still playing Persona 5? Yes, I am. I am on the second palace now. So I've taken down, uh, Kamoshida. That bastard. I know. Uh, I want to take back everything I said about the game. I'm obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. I, I am it. balls deep in this game, and I dream about it. I I love it. And it's absolutely still eccentric. Eccentric. <laughs> eccentric and over the top um, with the dialogue and the plot and everything, but I think that just drives the animation more, and uh, the combat, it just makes... I mean, everything is fantastic. Uh I don't even know where to start. I love that you go through each day and choose how you spend your day. And you have a certain number of days before you have before you get expelled or before someone takes legal action. And you have to defeat their palace by then. But you can also do stuff in the real world. And it's a little, like, strategic how you spend your yeah, time. Yeah, it's very time management. Yeah. Because you can do, like, what, three things per day? There's, like, a morning, an afternoon, and an evening. Yeah. And a lot of times, either the morning or the afternoon, you have to go to school. Yeah. And you have to, like, take quizzes yeah. and shit. Yeah. Um, I've been doing really good. I don't know yeah. how. It's been... You yeah. can cheat because you can check. As long as you're online, you can check, like, the worldwide oh, leaderboard choices. And I've it always gives you the right answer. Best. Um, yeah, just do your best. I've been doing my best. <laughs> no cheating in school. Uh, 
I do love I, like the time management. What I I have horrible anxiety with time limits. So this isn't like a Majora's Mask time limit. It's like just okay if I do this one thing, it'll take up this one section of the day. I know how I'm spending my time. It's not a real life clock ticking down on me. So I'm not anxious about the passing of time. I can definitely like. Yeah, Stop it's not. It, think about it. Yeah, it's not bit. ticking down on you. Yeah. It's like, okay, how do I spend today? Yeah. Um, and all of those um, choices, I guess, and what you do with your day or how you spend time with your friends. Sounds really weird um, if you've never played this. Um, it definitely has an effect on the game and like your stats because yeah. you can build out up like confident points and stuff like that. It all affects if affects combat. It's awesome. And I love, I I mean, you kind of told me that with each palace I get another character and I'm just loving that. I'm loving the characters, the combat. I love turn-based and I think that this is also like very like quick turn base like if you know what you want to do you can get through the battle fast and uh just having like the quick action commands mm -hmm. but also you can take your time when you need to i think it's just like, it almost works into like a rhythm when yeah. you're doing the combat it's like cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching, yeah. and you're doing all this uh because you know what you're going to do next or know what it's weak to yeah things like that it's extremely rewarding too like when you do the hold up and you take them out and they show the little picture of them yeah. like the oh my gosh we're awesome yeah it's yeah. like dun, dun, dun. yeah dun, 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 dun. it feels good and then yeah. when they like level up there's like the sound effects it's like i feel like it's like crack <laughs> like, yeah. i want more it's so fun i love it yeah. i love it yeah so i guess to explain real quick so there's seven palaces i believe but basically you're taking over you're well you're yeah, you're taking the heart of, like, evil adults, I guess. So there's seven of them, in which, and each of those, you know, adults comes with a connection to, like, a high school student who's related to them, or it's a teacher or something like that. So you gain, like, a new character, and then you explore their palace, which is really, like, in their mind. Yeah, it's like their consciousness, their subconsciousness. Yeah, so you're playing levels, like, inside of their thoughts, which is a really, really cool way to do level design. Um but yeah, there's also the balance of doing the, uh, you know, the daily life stuff. So you're, it's very much almost like a life sim, but then you've got, you jump into the palaces and it's very video gamey again. Yeah. And last time when I complained about all the dialogue, I honestly was just not past the tutorial, I guess. I mean, the tutorial is sporadic. You get to play and then they come back and teach you something new. But I really had barely experienced any combat. And now I feel like I'm actually in it. Like... The first palace was really there to teach you how to play. Sure. And now that I'm on the second one, I feel like I'm really enjoying the game. Yeah. Who's your favorite character? Playable character. My favorite playable. Joker? Yeah, I really like Joker. I feel like I'm. it's just bound to happen because you put yourself... He doesn't talk and you, you yeah. choose his dialogue um, when he does. So I feel like it's just bound to happen that you, you're literally in his shoes. You can't name him though. What did you name him? <laughs> She can't even re re reply. So his first name is Zach. Okay. Named after my wonderful boyfriend. Yeah. And his last name is Merlin. Named Zach. after my bird. All right. Well, fair enough. And the name of our uh, phantom troop, like the thieves, were called the Sneeps. The Sneeps? The Beeper Sneeps? <laughs> you just go with Sneeps. The the Sneeps, but the be it's short for Beeper Sneeps, of, of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm glad you're kind of coming around on that. Or it sounds like you're super coming around on that, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of my favorite games ever, so I'm glad you're enjoying that. Um, I have put down Elden Ring for the moment. Definitely going back to it. The game is so brutal that you almost need something else to play. Um, and I mentioned this in the Facebook group just last night, I think, um, about how much I'm loving Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of a spin-off of Borderlands. So if you've played Borderlands, you know about the shooting, you know about the looting, all that good stuff. Uh, super funny game. You guys have played through... Borderlands we stuff, played right? through the first two completely, and we're like halfway through the pre-sequel. We're having a hard time staying, our, keeping our attention with it. Okay. It is the weakest of the bunch. Yeah, probably. that's what I've heard. Uh, you can play as Claptrap, but I feel like they under, underdid it. Yeah. Um, but Tiny Tina is, is awesome. So it plays as a Dungeons & Dragons type game that's called Bunkers and Badasses. <laughs> 
uh, is the actual name of it. So she's the dungeon master, or man, I can't even remember what she calls herself. She's your favorite character, right? In the yeah. series, yeah. yeah. Did you meet the voice actor? Do I remember that? Clearly? Yeah, um, her voice actress is Ashley Birch, who's super popular now. At the time, she wasn't. She had done Tiny Tina, and, and I'm sure she had done some other stuff. She's probably most famous for voice acting Aloy from her, the Horizon games. Wow, I didn't even Same know that was chick, her. Yeah, That's completely different the voices. Range, the yeah. range. Wow. Maybe they put an effect on Tiny Tina's voice. Um, she's super immature, but cocky and smart and witty. I don't know. It just works. Um, she is awesome in it. She narrates a lot of the stuff that you do or stuff that's happening or getting ready to happen to you. Um, it's funny because uh, the main villain is voiced by Will Arnett, who everybody loves, who you love, right? Bojack Horseman. Oh, right? yeah. Um, so he's the main villain. And he has a skeleton army. And, of course, Tiny Tina, as clever and silly as she is, she calls them all, like, skelly men. And they're skelly mages. Oh, my She's God. like, a, she'll be like, a group of skelly mages appear. And then they'll, like, poof into existence. And then you have to, like, take them out. Um, so, yeah, it's really awesome. Uh, she narrates it all. But the shooting and looting is the same as it's always been, I guess. It's super addictive formula. There's nine bazillion different combinations of randomly generated guns that have different effects and all that stuff. That's awesome. But the big thing is they took out grenades and replaced it with spells. What? So you, like, cast with your hand. That's awesome. Um, essentially, they do a lot of the same things. Um, so there's, you know, random explosions. But there's things like you can bring down a huge meteor. Or you can throw stuff out that, like, sucks enemies in. And then you, then you could drop another spell on top of them or just shoot them all. The gameplay is super fluid. Everything works really well together. I'm playing as the Spellbound class. Um, so I played as the Magic Heavy class. Because I'm like, well, if this game's going to have magic, I'm going to lean into that. And it's cool because even a little bit down the character or, like, the skill tree, you can unlock to where you can also cast spells with your right hand. So you can literally holster your gun and just... You know, pew, 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 you know, with both hands or put different spells on each hand that kind of work together and stuff. That's chaotic. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Um, so the way that they did that, like I said, it's really similar to grenade effects, I guess. But some of them have delays on them. You know, some of them do different things. But comboing that with the gameplay and then how awesome the voice casting, um, voice acting is. Uh, it's Will Arnett is the villain. Um the other playable, or not playable characters, but the other characters that are actually playing the Bunkers and Badass game with you is voiced by Andy Samberg is one of them, and Wanda Sykes is the other one. Um, so awesome celebrity cast in it, and they all work really, really well together too. So I'm having a great time with uh, with Tiny Tina. And are I, there any I other familiar her. characters in it? Obviously we have Tiny Tina, but do they bring back anybody else? Uh, Torg I've made an, has made an appearance now. I'm only like level 20. Mm -hmm. Um no, that probably sounds higher than it is. So I've probably played uh, 10 hours, something like that. And maybe I haven't even played enough to have this uh, big of an opinion on it. Or to say that it's better than Borderlands 3. But it definitely is, I think. Or at least I'm more drawn into Borderlands 3. But yeah, it's a blast. Because it's funny. Um, everything's super satisfying. And then, like I said, the spells and everything uh, just kind of brings it all together. So I am jamming out on that right now. That's loving awesome. It. Does it have, like similar gameplay time like how long the game is to like the first second and third or is it i don't know i know the and i actually i haven't researched it i know the uh after the end game is different because in the other borderlands and i don't know if you guys explored this um you know a lot of games have what's called new game plus where you can beat a game and then kind of start it over but you keep your level um, and then, like, the enemies level up with you. Um, so you're starting the game over, but you're really not. Um, that's how a lot of the other Borderlands have worked. There's, man, what is it? The next level up, when you play it sec times, like, true Vault Hunter mode, and then you play it again, and it's ultimate Vault Hunter mode. There might even be another one, ultimate badass super Vault Hunter mode. I don't know. <laughs> you can play it through so many times. But I know Tiny Tina's is different. I haven't really looked that up because I didn't want to be spoiled on it. Bad. Um and for the first time, you just create your character and create your own skill tree and stuff like oh, that. Wow. Where the other Borderlands games, you choose from four preset whatevers. Yeah. So it's like a tank or, you know, sniper class, stuff like that. So you kind of get to build your character however you want. So that's cool, too. Um, yeah, the heavy emphasis, if you played, like, Dungeons & Dragons and stuff, you'll definitely get a lot of those references of those, you know, pen and paper role-playing games. Um, because essentially, that's what you're doing. It's just you're inside the game, so to speak. Yeah, I remember Airports. they had like a DLC for the second 
second game? Yeah, for the second game, that was Dungeons yeah. & Dragons, but this is obviously far more expanded yeah. fun. It's basically that. They just blew it up and yeah. made it a full game. What was that DLC called? I don't remember. I don't remember, but it was my favorite one by I far. I think it was Assault on Dragon Keep. That That's sounds right. I don't know. We'll Google it. Um, so yeah, they just blew that up and whatnot. But I haven't really been back to Elden Ring since I started playing this. It's not like I won't. Is Zach still playing Elden yeah, Ring? Yeah, yeah. He actually found, he called it a cheese in the game. <laughs> Do you know that term? Because I yeah. didn't. Maybe, I hope that's the term it's, he said. Um, it's where you can, it's like a glitch, but you can force it by something you do. And it's on the final boss. And he, like... So he's beat the game already? Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's hardcore. beat. I know. Well, his uh, cousin that he talked about last time is on, like, New Game Plus 3. Jeez. I know. Okay. Um, but yeah, he found a glitch that if you run up to the boss in a certain way, it'll, like, just totally freeze. And you can just take it out. Really? The first phase, anyway. Not the second phase, but... Yeah, so he's trying to show people the glitch in the game without, like, throwing on his headset and being like, yo. But people aren't listening, so... He's just off to doing his own thing again. So are like the developers aware of this? I don't know. He found it? it online, so they have to know. Like it, people talk about it. Mm. He's not. He he found it himself, but other people have also found it, and it seems pretty widely known. So I don't know. Hopefully That's they interesting. patch it. Or There's probably people Whatever listening that are like, here. yeah, I totally did that. Yeah. Yeah. Beat it. <laughs> so he's playing a new game plus already. Yeah. Okay. Did you? Oh, so he's staying with the same character or whatever. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, have you built any more roller coasters? I did build another park. Well, I built two more. I did one uh, go kart park, and then uh, yeah, that one I hated it. I don't... So you can theme your parks? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My favorite is like doing spooky stuff, but there's only so many spooky rides. Yeah. Uh, but in career mode, you have to um, like follow certain objectives. So each theme park, you have to meet certain goals, like build a go kart uh, track that's this long and I don't know. Like track pieces or yeah, something? You have to yeah, meet yeah. And then it has to like get this much profit, uh, monthly profit for this many months. And um, can your roller coasters malfunction? Yeah, they can break down. Uh, they While break people down. are on them? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then no. they just sit on there and they just complain that they're hungry and they can't. Get off. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not in harm, they're just starving. Yeah, they just, okay. they just. So usually when that happens, I put like a little food stand outside. So once they get off, they can just eat right away and my rating goes back up. Right. But the worst is really when the roller, like the big roller coasters break down because all your profit. I always play the game like on like speed times three. Like it's like I fast forward the I whole like time. I like The Sims. Yeah. And okay. so that I can just like, I that way when I make profit, it just obviously goes a lot faster. And when you break down the roller coaster, you just like all of a sudden you're negative five grand in like three seconds. And it, you're just like, I'll never recover financially from yeah. this. Um, and then Billy Bob repairs it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Billy Bob. Yeah. He was my mechanic on the go-kart place. I feel like I know him. Yeah, me too. Well, I watched, uh, well, I posted a group of videos and I'll probably do it again for this. I uh, posted a group of videos in the Facebook group of the games that we talked about. Yeah. And I watched the, I put a planet coaster. Is that what it's called? Planet yeah. coaster. I put a planet coaster, like gameplay trailer in there. And towards the end, they show like a maintenance guy working on something. Yeah. And immediately I was like, that's gotta be Billy My Bob. My boy. That's Billy Bob. <laughs> Fiction shit. Um, so I had a good laugh over that. That was funny. The Facebook group's been, been pretty fun so far. We've been posting stuff in there. Birds. Yeah. Game stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Birds. Games. Yep. It's, yeah. I feel like we got a lot of, uh, support really fast. It feels really yeah. good. Yeah. We enjoyed do doing the first episode. I know we had some audio issues, so hopefully this sounds better. Still working on some of that stuff. Okay. Well, we are going to take a break. When we come back, what are we talking about? Uh, how we play games. Ooh, yeah. So that's going to be a good good subject uh, as we kind of get started here. Um, talking about how, when, what position, so to speak. Uh -huh. I think everybody's different. I'm pretty routine, so I'm excited to talk about that. Um, so we'll catch you guys on the backside of this break. Now exclusively on YouTube... The Barn plays host to a number of podcasts that include Girl Dad, Vulgar Display of Podcasts, Birds and Swords, Live Sessions from the Barn, Wax World, The Chris Sable Power Hour, 
and Knuckleball Primetime. Please like, share, and subscribe to all of our content. We are back with Birds and Swords. Explain Sneeps and Beeper Sneeps and whatever that is that you verbiage or is that yeah that's entirely me um like i mean not beeper beeper they beep so that very historical context there um but i think it was just high can i say that on here can we talk about being high on the podcast i was high and um i was just talking about merlin and poking his head and i was like he's a beeper sneeper and Zach laughed. He thought it was hilarious. And then we named our Wi-Fi password Beeper Sneeper, and it stuck. So We are talking about the birds, by the way. I don't know if we mentioned that. So let's talk about, we wanted to talk about how we play. I know that's kind of a broad term or broad topic. So how as in, you know, where we play in our house, what time of day, that kind of stuff. So let's start with you, I suppose, Alyssa. So how do you play usually? Typically, I mean, all my systems are in the living room, and Zach and I have a really nice setup, actually. Um, So we have the main wall with two TVs, and uh, they're both hung up, and then we have, like, a long couch, and we both utilize the couch. Uh, Well, that's not true. Zach actually pulls the computer chair from the office area out in front of the couch so that he can sit a foot in front of the couch at the same level and play his game. But maybe it's easier on his back, I don't know. Because what I do is easier on my back. I used to just sit on the couch, but then during COVID, uh, all I did was play Breath of the Wild to the point where I like didn't move from my spot and I actually broke the couch. It was like a permanent indent and I had really bad back problems from it. And I had to like see a doctor and use this oh, roller no. and everything. Uh, so now when I play video games, I sit on top of the couch and I sit on like the hard part that's like behind you. Um, it's much nicer on my back. <laughs> to avoid video game injuries. Yes. So I sit up on the like uh, top back part of the couch and my TV's like eye level. Zach's is like high up and I think that's why he always has knots in his neck. Always complaining, asking for a back rub. I think it's because of that. He's cranking his neck all the time. But mine is eye level. I sit on the couch on the on the top part uh, for all of my systems, all the same. I love starting my day with video games. I always, like, whatever I have to do in the day, I would try to wake up an hour before that. Not to, like, work out like most people do. <laughs> I like to get on the couch and play some video games. I think it's a really just nice, relaxing way to start my day. Um, and I, I don't like being on, like, a headset. I know, like, Zach, even when he plays single-player games... He likes to have the headset and talk with the boys and, like, chat. It's, like, phone time with the girls, but, you know, on the headset. Yep. Um, I don't do that. I love total seclusion when I play my video games. I don't even like when Zach talks to me when I play my video games. Um, Is that mostly because you play single-player, involved, story? Gotta, very narrative-driven. Yeah, gotta yeah. hear what's going on. Yeah, I'm very into it. I also, like, the roller co- Planet Coaster... I don't mind if he's like talking to me or I'll play music or we'll play a TV show on his TV or something. That's okay. But yeah, I think it is the fact that I play a lot of like story driven games that I just want to be left alone. And then I go through my day and then I come back at the end of the day after I've accomplished all my adult things and I sit back down and I play my video games again. So I like to end, start the day. I like to start the day and end the day with video games. How often are both of you playing at the same time? Usually every night. Really? Usually we both end the night by playing video games, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Well, and he's getting a peek into what you're playing, and you get a peek into what he's playing. Yeah. So you're not necessarily playing it, but you're kind of experiencing it, it's I guess. It's kind of awesome, because when then when he talks about Elden Ring with people, I can be involved in the conversation. Obviously, I'm not like, oh, I play it too, but it's nice to know what they're referring to, because mm. I get to see it while he's playing. Um, so that's cool too. And we show each other games a lot. Um, so that's fun. Kind of like game swap. Yeah. That's pretty hardcore. You sit on the like upper part of the couch. Yeah. I level with the TV. Yes. Man, this is serious. And then you, you guys are usually playing together. Um, do you like playing in the morning better than the evening? Is it the same? Uh, I think I like the evening better cause I can kind of devote more time to it. Like 
I can make bad decisions and stay up later and play. Whereas when I do it in the morning, I'm like, well, I can't be late to work for video games. So uh, evening for sure, because I can always, I don't have to put the game down at a certain time. Man, well, it depends, I guess. I was going to say, how much of your day do you spend playing games? Uh, Yeah, it definitely does depend. Sunday is like my reset day. So usually I spend a solid like, 10 to 12 hours playing video games on Sundays. Wow. Yeah, that's Ripping like, through. yeah, I mean, that is like my total reset day. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't go out. I don't even get out of my pajamas. I just sit on the top of the couch and play video games. Uh, every other day, I would say it really depends. It can range from one to three hours. It's not as much as Sunday, unfortunately. And you do do other stuff. <laughs> it's going to sound like you don't uh, do anything except play video games. Uh, but I guess you guys don't watch like a lot of TV. Do you guys binge TV shows, watch we movies? Do. We, we do. I don't know where we find time. It's usually when we watch people's pets. A lot of people trust us to watch their pets. And then we go into their house. And while we're taking care of the pet, we like binge a TV show. Okay. And that's usually when we get our like anime or... Oh, yeah. You yeah. guys watch a lot of anime. Yeah. That's right. That's right. How do you feel? Now, I like watching TV, too, but I feel like it's a different experience. I think we talked about um, comparing playing video games to books mm. last episode, um, how you're assuming the role of a character and stuff like that. Um, so I think, uh, you know, they're kind of the same thing, but I always tell people you're definitely more involved when you're playing video games because yeah. you're making decisions. Um, it's like your brain's working more or something, yeah. I guess well, that's would be what I, yeah. say That's what I really love about uh, games like... like that have puzzles in them because if I have a really stressful day, I have to really focus on the puzzles and I like just completely let go of my day. So like if I watch a TV show, I can still stew on things, think on things, be on my phone, not really pay attention. And like, you can do that with a video game too, especially like more mindless games, but it is more involved entirely. So it's therapeutic really. Yeah. 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 You kind of go into a different zone. Yeah. And I think, you know, we talk about the outsider's perception of that, how you're just, uh, man, how would you explain it? Like you're just comatose kind of in, and you're not paying attention. You're just, in, it's rotten your brain, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And it's definitely not that. I mean, I guess it depends on the game. Yeah. Um, it could be. I, it definitely could be. It's once it starts leaking how, into your daily life and causing issues elsewhere. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But how, like, I mean... We say it varies on the game because how much of your brain are you using in Hyrule Warriors, I guess, because you're just <laughs> smashing like hundreds of orcs or yeah, whatever Yeah, really, is. that's a truly a mindless game. Yeah. It, they like to make you think you're being strategic, but it's really a button yeah. masher, yeah. even when you know the combos, I mean. So do you play games more when you're like in a funk? Do you play games more when you're happy? Oh, definitely the funk. Uh, I play significantly less video games in summertime, and I think that's just because the seasonal depression is lifted. And every low part of my life, I can track back and remember what video games I was binging. Uh, I love video games no matter what. I have a great time with them, but I fall into them much more when I'm uh, stressed or anxious or upset, because um, it is really like an escape. It really is. I still have fun with them when I'm in a good mood, but when I'm in like a really good mood, I'm like, let's go see people, let's go do things. Yep. And they're not like at the top priority. I mean, I remember when I came back from uh, when I studied abroad and I moved back in with my parents. I love my parents, but it was like a really hard time. You come back from something that makes you feel really good and really intelligent and kind of have to fall back into like the mediocre life that I was living anyway. Mm -hmm. And I, I played through just game after game and I didn't talk to anybody. It wasn't that bad. Like I had a great time with the games. Do you have a specific game that sticks out during that time period? Um, one that sticks out during that time was, uh, the DMC Devil May Cry remake. That okay. was, yeah, that was the one I played. It was a short game, but I just kept replaying it. Um, I, it was, so what was it about that game? I could Is not Is that a depressing you. game? Did it match your no, mood? No, it was just fun. I really haven't played through... I played a little bit of Devil May Cry, but I couldn't tell you any of the lore or any of that. Yeah. It, it I, seems like an emo game. It was, yeah. The I mean, the remaster, they definitely went a lot more edgy. I enjoyed it. A lot of the fans didn't. I've been with Devil May Cry since the first game. Loved the remaster. I thought it was fantastic. I liked the route that they took. But it was very edgy, very sad emo boy. Um, and a lot of people didn't like that, which is, I think they didn't, dis 
that why they discontinued it. Um, but I don't think that's why I played it. I think I just like went to GameStop and got a bunch of games and that one was just addicting enough to keep my attention. Mm. Um, I played like the to- Tomb Raider remake at that time too, when they like the PlayStation 4 remake of the remake. <laughs> It was, Redid it again. <laughs> it was like the total revamp of Tomb Raider that they did for the PlayStation 3, but then they put it on the 4 yeah. and redid it again. Definitive edition. Definitive, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That one I played a lot of put a lot of time into too. Yeah. I mean like during COVID too, when we were all stuck in our houses. Yep. That's how I got all nine hundred of the Korok seeds and put a <laughs> dent in our couch. Wow. <laughs> Breath of the Wild for life. <laughs> yeah, same for me. Um Fallout three is one that sticks out for me um i was actually coming out of a pretty rough breakup at the time so i was lonely um was probably the best description of my mood um and fallout three i don't know maybe i'm kind of like that when i get emotional of any kind of sort i kind of tend to lean into it that's my personality um so it was a lonely time for me i guess you know i was a little sad and whatever uh, and Fallout 3 kind of matched that because it's a very lonely adventure. It's just kind of you and the world. Um, yeah, I got a picture up in the room here that definitely depicts that. And I really, really fell into that game. And it's not that it kept my mind off of things, but it kind of just helped me cope, I guess. But that's like a really lonely adventure, so to speak. And for some reason, that worked for me. And I think a lot of people have some of those similar experiences to where... You know, playing games help them through whatever shit they're going through. And that's probably understated even, um, because I'm sure everybody has a story for that. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was in middle school, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, a lot of people, like, just kind of shit on how you sail everywhere. Mm -hmm. I was really, like, I was a sick kid. I was ill. I had, like, an autoimmune issue. And uh, I spent a lot of time at home, and I just played that game and sailed around all the time. And now that game has, like, a really special place in my heart because, like, I, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. literally, I love it. I Just the sailing, it was so calming, mm-hmm. and that's what I needed in my life because I was so anxious. I was missing school. Teachers weren't being understanding. Students were picking on me. I really needed something to just, like, calm me down. And that game, the sailing is, you're just chilling. Yeah. Obviously there's things like you get attacked, but you're right. yeah. <laughs> it's not all smooth sailing, but yeah, it, there's key moments in my life. I can definitely remember what games I was playing. Yeah, for sure. So, so how do you play? <sighs> how physically, where, why? Um, when? so I play mostly You know, I used to play in the living room, mostly. Um, Once I got a roommate, um, that kind of went out the window. I've had a couple different roommates. I guess this is my first one that began the habit. Um, To where I moved uh, my video game stuff to my room, like a hermit, I guess. Um, So I do like to play in bed. I don't like lay all the way down. I like to prop pillows up, like, against the wall so I'm sitting up and whatnot. But I feel nice and cozy in there. Um, So I typically play... Laying down in bed. Um, I will also say that sometimes, especially in the past, when I had it hooked up uh, uh, in the living room for sure, and I still do this from time to time even in my room, I am seven years old again. I do like to sit Indian style, like in the floor. Like, um, it's not like my controller has a cord or anything, because that's usually why we did that. We had to sit close to our consoles. So maybe some of that still lives on, but... Uh, so every once in a while, I'll just, I'll sit Indian style on the floor, which is kind of weird, I guess. Or maybe it's cute. I don't know. It's cute. Okay, good. Um, but most mostly in the bed, propped up like against the wall. Um, I've got a nice Sony Bravia. Is that what it is? Yeah, I have a nice 4K awesome TV in there. Um, so I prioritize the gaming on the television in there. Um, yeah, so most of the time it's kicked back in there. Um, and then I still watch TV and stuff out in the living room, eat all that stuff. So, but I usually game in my bedroom, and I think that's mostly because I just transferred my stuff in there when I had roommates, mostly. We talked about my mood and stuff. Time of day, um, man, I like both. I love get. I get as I get older, I get up earlier, earlier in the morning. What time do you get up in the morning? Uh, it really depends. If you don't have anything to do, if I don't have anything to do, usually like ten. Okay, so you unless sl- I went out the night before, then like three p.m. Okay. I mean, I guess it really depends on when you go to bed, I guess. Um, as I get older, I feel like I need less sleep because I'm like six hours and that's I wake up and that's all I need, which is beneficial because I get to be awake and 
be alive for longer periods of time during the day. Um, but I love getting up in the morning um, and playing games. That might be my favorite time to play games. I'm usually up by 6.30 or 7, to wow. be honest. But if I go to sleep at midnight, I usually don't stay up much later than 12 or 1. Um, so I can get up at 6 or 7. I've got my 6 hours, and I love flipping on the console. Um, either if Even if it's I have to work that day, maybe I'll play for an hour in the morning. Um, it's just such a nice way to start the day. I know. Something you just genuinely enjoy yeah. and look forward yeah. to doing. Have some coffee, play some games for yes. a second. Um, depends on what you're into. Um, I mentioned last time that I like to play sports games. That hour is a perfect chunk to play one baseball game or one game of Madden or one game of NBA, whatever it is. But, you know, it depends on the game. Like Tiny Tina, I can jump off and on with that super easy. The quests are usually pretty short. You can knock them out in 20 or 30 minutes, so I could do a couple of those. Um, so I really like playing in the morning the best, probably. And I like watching TV, like, right before I go to bed. So I'll usually game. Sometimes I work till 9 o'clock, and I get home at 10.30 or 9.30 or 10. And sometimes it's straight to TV. Um, depends on what I'm binging or if sports are on or whatever. We're getting ready to roll into baseball season, so it's going to be Cardinal baseball, you know, for a lot of those times. Um, in the summer, just like you, I play less in the summer for sure. More active, go out and do more stuff. Um, like I said, I'm a huge baseball fan, so I watch almost every Cardinals baseball game. I don't know how you have time to like sports and video games. Different kind of nerd, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't, yeah, when, when baseball season's going, I just don't play as much. But winter, like you said, we get, you know, we're in Wisconsin, so the winters are long and dark. And, <laughs> um, so, Everyone holes up and yeah, permits. Yeah. And there's there's cool stuff to do. You can go snow tubing or do whatever. What, what, what do you do in the snow? Anything? Uh, avoid it. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I like sledding. Well, I learned how to snowboard. Me and Zach learned how to snowboard last year, but he got a concussion um and then i sprained my ankle crossing the street this past summer oh yeah she showed me the exact spot tonight actually. yeah we played tennis for hours and then when i was walking across the street i just popped my ankle pretty bad and it's still not fully healed so between his previous concussion and my sprained ankle we said no snowboarding no yeah. snowboarding can i here. say that's hilarious <laughs> that you went through like a full tennis match <laughs> totally good and then walking back to the car <laughs> Just popped Spring it. My, the neighbors were there and everything. Everybody got to see it. It was the, like it was in the middle of the intersection. The light turned green. Like all these cars were just staring at me. It was super classy, super graceful. Yeah, finer moment. So, yeah. So there's stuff to do here in the winter. Uh, it is Wisconsin, so a lot of people just drink. You know, yeah. um, go out to the bars and stuff. But um, summer is awesome here. Um, lots of music festivals. You know, doing different things or going out getting out on the lake, whatever you want to do. But um, so definitely play less in the summer. Some of it has to do with outdoor activities. Some of it has to do with uh, baseball. Most of it has to do with baseball, probably. <laughs> I can't avoid it. It's the way I was raised. It's in my blood. <laughs> you know, what I play when I'm happy, you know, I don't know. I play the same stuff. It's just a different feedback you get from it, I guess. Yeah. I feel like when... I'm not feeling as good about things. I get more into stuff. I don't know if that's weird. No, that's how I feel too. When I like get a really good mood, sometimes when I play video games, I almost feel like I could be productive and do something else right now. Mm -hmm. um, but when I'm not feeling like when I'm stressed or tired, I'm like, this is perfect. My de-stressor. You're a busy person though too. Yeah. Because you do your art stuff. You do your art commissions and you've done all kinds of those. That's a good mention. You've done some video game art stuff, right? You did the Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, my friend commissioned for her son. I did this Pokemon mural. Well, I'll post it on the Facebook page. Yeah. It was the most fun commission I've ever had. Uh, she wanted him to have, like, a bunch of the originals on the wall. And I did, like, Pikachu and uh, Oddish um, and Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur yeah. Squirtle, Mew. I did some Pokeballs. It was just a blast. I love that stuff. I love nerdy commissions. It's my favorite. That's cool. Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah, you guys have to check that out for sure. That's a whole other topic, though. We'll get into art and stuff in future episodes, and we can't wait to talk about that. So that's kind of how we play. Those are the positions we assume. <laughs> Uh, those are the times of day that we play, um, and then kind of how moods affect us. Um, I think that's an awesome topic because, as we've mentioned a lot of times, games can help you through 
you know, some stuff. It depends on what you are. You know, music helps you through things. Uh, spending time with family, you know, whatever it is. Games kind of serve that function too, um, if you're definitely into that. So let us know uh, how you guys play, especially what position you assume. I think that's awesome. Uh, if you're laying in bed, maybe you do a beanbag chair. Maybe you're on the couch. Uh, or Indian style, like a six-year-old. That's how I like to jam. Um, so cool, cool stuff. So we are going to go to break, and we'll come back, and we'll finish this up right after this. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Daryl Buchanan. Most know me as DJ Swerving Podcast on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. Check in every Sunday for the episodes. We got a new podcast called the Big Hungry and Swerve Movie Podcast. I'll be every Wednesday on the same platform. Be sure to check that out. Also, got a detailing business. Be sure to check that out. Swerve Auto Detail on Facebook, Instagram. My phone number is five seven three three two seven. 1473. I run rates at 125 for a full inside and out detail. I have a summer package. You can get you five cleans for 225. Like I said, that's Swerve Auto Details on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm your boy, Swerving Podcast, baby. Welcome back, guys. So apparently, I had to. Almost fire you? Can you tell that story? Because that's why we came back to talk about why you almost fired me. It's because I was yep. sleeping on the job. Oh my god! Like literally, not even like at a desk. Like I worked at the Hartford GameStop, um, so it'd just be like one person working there at a time because we really saw like one customer every twelve. There hours. were literally cows. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's hilarious. There were cows behind the store. There yeah. was like a field and a trough. If, More cows than people, really. Yeah. And uh, I would just get so freaking bored, and I would fall asleep. And one time, someone delivered a pillow to the wrong address, and it was to the Hartford GameStop. And I used that pillow and slept on the counter, and you walked in. You really don't remember this? No. So it was... Okay, so they sent a pillow... It was, was a light-up like, pillow, too. It, like, lit up when you put your head on it. It, like, turned, like, green. So it wasn't, like, a pillow guy? It was something, like, nerdy or It was just a normal... It was, like, to some girl named Catherine or something. Like, just... They took it to the wrong address. To they, Instead of someone's home, they delivered it to the Hartford GameStop. And <laughs> it's not like there's any houses around GameStop, so I don't know yeah. how they messed that up that bad. But I just opened it, not knowing what was going on. Or I don't know. But I opened it and used it and slept on the counter out in the front, like the customer facing front. Yeah. And uh, you were... I, I vaguely remember this. Yeah. I have a terrible memory, though. Shortcoming of mine. Yeah. It was <laughs> good times. Core memory. Core memory Core for sure. Core memory. But you didn't fire me, so thank you. Did I write you up? No. You didn't... Well, maybe. I was like, just don't do that shit. Either. Yeah. You were really angry, but it was just like a strongly worded discussion you had with me like don't sleep on the how job how old were you like 18 uh i think it was like 19 or 20 yeah i was young so why were you tired school i was in college yeah yeah <laughs> and it was at the hartford GameStop. Yeah. there was never any customers there yeah, was we, like two a day yeah we closed that store that was a bad bad decision well it was it was its location terrible location put it in a cow field like yeah. <laughs> literally a cow field yeah. it was now all... there's like a gas station there which i feel like is more yeah, it was like off of a Walmart or something. Yeah. Strip center. It was just on the back side of town. <laughs> yeah, I vaguely remember that. Apparently, I wasn't super mad or else it would be a core memory for me as well. <laughs> apparently, I don't remember it very well. Okay, so um, we've got a br breaking news. Beep, 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 beep. So Breath of the Wild 2 has been delayed. So why don't you tell us about that, Alyssa? I know you're you're hurt. Are you uh, hurt? Are you disappointed? Are you okay with it? I'm actually super okay with it because I'm just, I, like we said in the last episode, I play games like on backlog, so I'll get to it. Whether it comes out tomorrow or in three years, I'll get to it in three years. And I've actually noticed a lot of reactions have been similar. Everybody is kind of like, I'm okay with this because I want a good game. I want a full game, a complete game. I don't want a ton of patches. I don't want... I think we've seen some disappointment in the past uh, with other games 
And well, let's talk about the first Breath of the Wild if people don't know about it. Uh, the best game ever. Okay. Yeah, one of the best open world games, at least of like... If you ask a lot of people, at least who have played it and who played a lot of games, they're going to say, or at least what I say to people is, it's probably the best game I've played in the last decade. I think that's fair, yeah. right? It's got that lasting memory type of thing. So obviously it's Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Zelda is an iconic series going back to 1985. We're going to have to have somebody fact check that. I want to say it's 1985, 1986 um, on the original Nintendo. So anyway, Zelda's lived on forever, but they totally home run uh, with Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You'll hear us mention it plenty. I think we compared it to Elden Ring uh, quite a bit. So there's the background on that. Anyway, so there is a sequel coming. Um, is that its name? Breath of the Wild 2? They I named believe the so. Thing? I, that's what all the articles are calling it is just Breath of the Wild 2. Uh, but I could definitely fact check that as well. <laughs> Hopefully we look back on this, because I can't see them calling it that, honestly. Yeah, I mean... Is there any Zelda out there that's called 2? Zelda 2? Yeah, the original one. Into that <laughs> weird side-scrolling bullshit that no one liked. Well, it, it was okay, I guess. It's just not a real Zelda game. Um, so hopefully we look back on Breath of the Wild 2, and it's actually called something super cool. So... Obviously, the Breath of the Wild 2 is what we're calling it now, has been delayed. You got some info on that? Uh, yeah, it was announced in 2019 in June. Um, Which is hilarious because what year did you play the first game? I think it was 2020. <laughs> yeah, it was your COVID game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that 2020? Wait, COVID-19. Well, well, yeah, 20. <laughs> <laughs> COVID first... wasn't named after the year it came Wait, out. Wait, what? It wasn't? I'm I... fairly certain. Well, it's not the 19th I don't know COVID. enough about it. <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> I don't know how they come up well, with numbers. Well, I played it in 2020, I'm fairly certain. Uh, so I played it after it came out anyway. Um, right. Uh, well after the first one came out and after the second one was announced. Yep. The, the first, I remember, because I always watch... Uh, E3 every year, and I remember the announcement for it because it was super minimal, which I think was really smart. Just really hype up the fans. They have a loyal fan base, mm -hmm. and now they have even more fans because you didn't have to know anything about the series to enjoy Breath of the Wild. So by releasing this, like, hey, we're doing another, really minimal, just, uh, I think, really hyped everybody up, and then eventually they announced that it would be coming out in um, 2021. They announced in 2021 for a 2022 release date, yes. um, but that has been pushed back to 2023, tentatively. And you don't care at I all. don't. I really don't. I don't think I'll get to it till 2025. <laughs> uh, but, I, and you know, I'm in tons of Zelda fan pages on, like, Facebook and Instagram, and it seemed like that's the collective reaction is we really want them to take the time to make a game that they're going to be proud to release that we're going to enjoy uh did we, they say why it was delayed not that i saw but just to i'm sure it was something generic like to bring you the product that you deserve yeah, and the experience yeah. that we want you to i have. mean i think there's just so much i don't even think i know there is so much pressure on the video game industry to get things done by deadline mm -hmm. i mean art in general is all deadline based do you feel that tension in the industry? Like, tons of delays? Yeah. I mean, we've had some... I don't know. I don't want to get too corporate America. Yeah. But there's obviously been some bad experiences with some game developers and publishers both. Um, both pressure of to get stuff out on time, heavy workloads. I've seen tons of stuff about unrealistic stuff, just like you were saying. Like, yeah. people working 60-hour work weeks. We've got to hit this deadline. That was a big thing with Telltale, wasn't it? That was a big reason that they... Yeah, I don't know. I remember reading an article that the people that worked there were under, like, pretty unrealistic uh, working conditions or just over... They were just being overworked. Um, yes. And I, I, I hear that a lot. I mean, even... So one of my favorite series of all time is Bioshock. And uh, I remember when I got the remaster, it came with uh, an interview of the director of the game um, and, like, some of the designers... And he seemed kind of off-putting to me. I hope he never listens to this. Ken Levine is his name. <laughs> What's up, Ken? <laughs> Don't listen. Turn You're it off. You're a creative genius, but you need to lay off your people. <laughs> yes. And I remember me and my best friend Natasha were watching it, and we were like, he seems like kind of like mad scientist vibes, right? Like, 
he he knows what he wants the product he got is incredible he realized his uh artistic dreams but something seems off like he'll do anything to get there and sure enough like a few weeks ago there was like an article released that the working conditions um from him and people directly under him were just forcing on the employees were kind of crazy and like mean and almost bullying nature you hear a lot about like sexual harassment we won't get into that right now but it was more so just like the working conditions sure. and just uh i think i think the pressure is just like trickling down if that well, makes sense yeah and i think a lot of that goes to man i i don't know it's what like i said like the corporate america like we've got a you know financial stuff right like we yeah. have to make this we have to release this by this date so we can make this money in this quarter because of these investors or whatever it is. And again, we won't go too deep into that, but I think there that a lot of that pressure stems from money mostly, probably. Yeah. Um and you know, it depends. Uh Nintendo, you know, going back to the Breath of the Wild, Nintendo takes the utmost care with, you know, their especially their first party stuff that they develop and publish in house. Um so it's interesting to see a Breath of the Wild 2 delay because Nintendo typically does not delay their games. <clears throat> they also usually, you know, like Breath of the Wild 2, it was announced too early. Usually Nintendo announces a game and then it's out three or four months later, typically. Yeah, that's true. I know there's I some exceptions that. to that rule, but a lot of the times they're like, hey, here's this thing. They're, you know, they show it at E3 in the summer in June and it comes out in October or November. Um, it's not the case with this. Um, it's not the case with Metroid either that was shown. Man, 2015 or 2016 we still don't have that game um but for something this huge um that like you said you know hardcore players and casual players alike you know there's a lot of switches in a lot of people's homes that aren't hardcore gamers they're casual gamers that game was recommended to them that game was advertised well a lot of people played that game it was very accessible um it was fun you could play it however you wanted and do things in the order that you wanted um so it created this anticipation for a sequel and to see that delayed is interesting and i'm sure it's you know quality of product type of stuff um as far as getting that out but we're not going to see it this year i'm like you i'm okay with that i think most people would be um because we want a quality product over something rushed to try to make you know whatever money we have by the end of fiscal 2022. yeah i totally yep so what are some other, I know we kind of created a list, so what are some other notable game delays that we've lived through? Yeah, so in honor of the Breath of the Wild 2 delay, I looked up um, other uh, infamous video game delays in history. Infamous um, is a great game, by the way. Yes, that is <laughs> I true. love Infamous. <laughs> Proceed. Um, a big one, I didn't have like the dates of announcement versus delay, but I uh, just wanted to talk about Dying Light 2, just because I feel like... This game has been delayed my whole life uh, to the point where I just don't even want it anymore. It's out now. Yeah, it's totally um, out. But, like, even... You're not getting it confused with Dead Island, are you? Because Dead Island 2 no. has been announced for, like, 10 years. No, Dying Light 2. And maybe it hasn't been that long. Maybe it just feels like forever to me. But Dying Light 2, I feel like... Because Dying Light, the first game, was, like, a big reason why I got the PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. And then when they announced Dying Light 2, I was really pumped... And I kept pre-ordering it, and they kept pushing it back. I feel like they pushed it back three or four times. And eventually I was like, well, yeah, eh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dying Light is a zombie game, by the way. It's like a parkour zombie game. Yeah, functions like, the day-night kind of thing. Kind of like Minecraft does, I guess. A little it, more intense. <laughs> a little more intense. But when it gets dark, it gets spooky and crazy, and you gotta, you got to watch yourself. Um, but yeah. Uh, and so d the Dying Light, so you don't even care anymore? No. So it's out. It, don't, I don't even have don't an interest, it. which is weird that usually doesn't happen for me. I'm not sure why it did with this one. Maybe I will pick it up eventually. Um, maybe just the hype of it died because it got delayed so much. Yep. And I was so hyped that it just trailed off. Fizzled. I mean, that's weird coming from me. I waited 13 years for Kingdom Hearts 3, but um, that wasn't a delay. That was just me being a loyal fan. Yeah, uh, same here. Another game, so then some other games I have on here, a big one is Cyberpunk. Yes. Delayed three times and still widely accepted as a bad game. Yeah. Well, Or okay. a disappointing game. I'll disagree. I think the game is awesome. Um, okay. Unf 
well, for, I was going to say unfortunately. Fortunately, I had a PlayStation 5 at launch. So when the game launched, because Cyberpunk is notorious for a failed launch. I don't think the game was bad, but it was full of bugs. Yeah. Like, it wasn't ready to launch, but they had already delayed it. Do you have how many years that was? No, I just... It's got to be years. Three times. Yeah. It's definitely Three years. times over some years. Um, and if you had, like, a standard system, you know, standard PS4, standard Xbox, it, the thing just wouldn't run on there. It was broken. It yeah. would crash. People couldn't play it. I heard it ran pretty well on PC. You would, like, fly off of your motorcycle. Like, your character wouldn't even be attached to the motorcycle anymore. <laughs> just hilarious stuff. So the game wasn't ready. Um, but... Luckily for me, like I was saying, I had a PlayStation 5, and the game ran fine for me. Oh, wow. Um, there'd be weird little things, like the loot would, uh, like, hover, like, a foot off the ground instead of being on the ground. Just weird, little, minute things that really didn't affect my experience. Maybe it was just ahead of its time. It, the older, uh, old systems. The PlayStation 4, I mean, maybe just wasn't built for it. Yeah, it, it, couldn't, run, like, it couldn't run on there. Because I heard PC was fine, and sounds like yours was fine on the 5. Yep. If you had a Series X, a PS5, or a high-grade PC, you were fine. Everybody else was screwed. Um, and that's not the way you launch a game. And that's, uh, they well, to the point where they even issued refunds for people who bought it digitally and physically. That was crazy. I've ne I mean, my friend bought it on the PlayStation Network and got a refund. I've never seen yeah. that offer ever. No. I mean, that just shows how poorly it was launched. Yeah. And it was... I, it was one of the most anticipated games ever. Yeah. Every gamer, every type of gamer was excited for this game. You talk to anybody and they were looking forward and to I it. And I think it goes back to the pressure that we were talking about yeah. to get this thing out and make the money and whatever. It was a disastrous launch. CD Projekt Red, who made the game, will tell you that. Um, and they're a top-tier AAA studio. They made The Witcher that everybody loves. Yeah. Uh, they're extremely good at writing games, uh, making everything feel important. Have you played The Witcher? All right, you're fired. <laughs> um, um, so what they're known for is side quests mean just as much as like main story stuff. You can get super involved in it. And Cyberpunk was that way. I had a great experience with it, despite the delays. Um, you know, I had a big anticipation for it, you know, coming off playing The Witcher. Um, so I was lucky. That's all I'm saying. But disastrous launch, dis disastrous delay, delay, yeah, delay. That um, that was crazy. I've but if you haven't played Cyberpunk, game. apparently it's it's good now, and they've patched it all up. Uh, go play it, because it's awesome. Next on the list, I have Alan Wake, which mm. was delayed for six years. Announced in 2005, and then came out in 2006. Six years. That doesn't add up. Were Announced the date? in 2005, 2005, and came out in 2010. Okay, That's so, five years, but that doesn't seem right to me. That was a 360... This is an IGN article, so don't blame me. Yeah. So that was a 360 exclusive, right? Yeah. As far as I know. So 2005 was, was that the, that was either the launch year or the year after the 360 launch. And then they ended up releasing it towards the end of its life cycle then, I guess. Which was worth it. Incredible or Towards game. the end. Yeah, it really I think is. that game turned out gorgeous. I loved it. It was spooky. It was unique. I, the, like the plot was awesome. Um, I, you and your flashlight. You and just you and your flashlight right in your book. Uh, I loved that game. I my friend got me the collector's edition that had like the game case that looked like the book. Like yeah. it was his book. Yeah. I thought that game was spectacular. And if you played a uh, Quantum Break, there's Easter eggs from Alan Wake. I have not too. played Quantum Break, but that great makes me game. want to play it. Great game, loved it. I think they did a fantastic job. Kind of weird. The tried to do a new thing where they throw in live action sequences where it's like a yeah. TV show. Yeah. Had Felt real a little unnatural, and... but it wasn't the worst thing. But the Easter eggs from Alan Wake and the rest of the game were really great. Uh, highly recommend. Yeah, good stuff. And the second one looks super cool too. And Jake Gyllenhaal is the is Alan Wake now. Do you know is that? The second Alan Wake announced? Yeah. Holy I'm going to show you the trailer hell. directly after this. I am freaking pumped. The trailer's really good. Yeah, and Jake Gyllenhaal is playing Alan Wake now. Love that. Uh, the next game I have on here is Resident Evil 4. I didn't play this game, but it was delayed for six years. You haven't played Resident Evil 4? I haven't played... I do played you like first Resident one. Evils? I, I think I do. I just never... I only played the first one. Like, cause the Was the first one like a point and click? Am I thinking no. of the right game? No. It was single screen... 
so to speak. It's oh. almost like you played from a security camera and you'd move your character, but the camera wouldn't move. And I'm then you would sure go to the it. next board and the camera would change. I think I played it's it. It's totally right up your alley because yeah. it's a spooky it's a spooky game. I love my spooky And games. it's a puzzly game. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll... I mean, I since I haven't played it, I'll ask you, was it worth the wait? It's worth yeah. the wait. Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to most people, Resident Evil 4 is one of the best in the series. Yeah. It's a little more action-based because it plays like a third-person kind of over-the-shoulder shooter thing. Um, but there's enough lore and puzzly and stuff that, that, yeah, most people would say that's one of the best games in the series. And you should play Resident Evil games. Do I need to play them in order? Are they, like, consecutive? Um, there's returning characters, so you might want to think about it, yeah. All right. Sounds good. You could jump into, like, 7 and 8, the newer ones, because they introduce a new protagonist, but they still reveal some older characters. Yeah, I don't know. I would probably you like, like from the You beginning. like playing series. I like playing series. things in the order, yeah. yeah. I mean, Persona was different, because I was promised it's okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Persona's like Final Fantasy. Like, yeah. Each of the games are their own thing. Yeah. Uh, the next one I have on here is L.A. Noir, which was delayed for seven years. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. You said that to me earlier, and I was like, what the hell? I Seven like, years? I was why did I tell this to you I off the podcast? Yeah. I didn't even know that that... Uh, I mean, I remember when it was released and revealed, they had real groundbreaking, like, uh, CGI... Not CGI. Like, the mocap. Yeah. Their because, facial expressions. Yeah, because you'd have to be able to tell if someone was lying. Well, that's probably what delayed it. I feel like L.A. Noir, like... I played it on the 360, and it very much felt ahead of its time. Yeah. Detective game. So you played as a detective, kind of like solving crimes and talking to suspects and figuring out if they were lying. Kind of a whodunit type of thing. Rockstar made it, who made uh, Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead. So they kind of went out of their comfort Fantastic zone. Fantastic game. I loved every second of it. Ate it up. I had, like, the director's cut or whatever, like, mm -hmm. the really long edition, and absolutely loved it. I, I do think the game was ahead of its time. So Seven the delay years. makes sense. What, or, do you have the dates on that? Like uh, it was announced in... It was announced in... See, this doesn't add up either, right? 2005 it was announced and released in 2011. What's okay. that man? Well, six years, but okay. still, it could have been early 2005 and could yeah. have been late 2011. I mean, this is all off an IGN article, I'll say again. It's not yeah. us. Um, but yeah, apparently, allegedly, it was delayed for seven years. But for me, this game, it makes sense because they really used the graphic, graphics of the facial expressions. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to look at the character and tell if they're lying to you. Like, they, when you are when you got them detained and you're asking them questions, are their eyes shifting? Are right. they, like, are, do they look nervous? What are their eyes, like, their, like, cheeks doing? Like, I feel like the delay makes sense because they were creating a game based off of facial expressions. Right. So... That one was not super They surprising. were tinkering with new technology, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But they ended up, you know, like we said with a lot of these, they've perfected what they wanted to do, and it was worth the wait. And that's what's important, really. Um, the next one I have here is The Last Guardian, which was delayed for nine oh years. Oh, my God, yeah. That yeah. one I remember very well, because... The, I didn't feel like that one lived up to the hype. No, actually, I never even beat it. I remember it was announced when I was still in high school, and I was still, like, reading the physical game informers sure. that were mailed to my house. And what I would do is any games that I saw in Game Informer that I really wanted, I would rip the page out and hang it on the back of my door. And I had that. It turned yellow. It was, like, on the back of my door for so long. And then I moved out of my dad's house. <laughs> and, like, I don't, maybe it's still there. You're right. <laughs> we don't know. But uh, when I finally, I borrowed my best friend Natasha's and what's up Natasha what's up uh it like really was dis. I don't want to call it disappointing no it was disappointing it, it just like they, well did you play eco or shadow of the Colossus yeah, like were shadow you familiar Colossus with the Colossus was freaking phenomenal yeah. Uh, so that's maybe why it was so disappointing. Yeah. They I think, really... I think it was because so many people fell in love with Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. They're, they're expecting this well, awesome experience. They tried and... to create this AI that seemed to like live and like have mm -hmm. its own entity and like the way it moved and acted, but it was to the point where it wasn't even responsive to what you were doing. Yeah. And I the would camera look up controls a walkthrough. were terrible. Too. Horrible. And I would look up a walkthrough because I would be stuck on a part. And I was doing the right thing the whole time. It just wasn't, like, initiating the scene I needed or the... You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that one was truly a letdown. And I waited... I thought so, too. Years. Yeah. yeah. And usually that's not the case. So that's almost the exception 
to the rule. Because I think a lot of the times games get delayed, it's something that we're anticipating. It's something big. Yeah. And then when it comes out, it's awesome. But that one, that one did not work out. The next one I have here is Diablo 3. Have you played Diablo 3? Yeah, I love Diablo 3. I've only ever played it. Um, do you remember 42 Lounge in Milwaukee? Mm -hmm. There was a video. It was like a bar for gamers. Oh, okay. And they, you could like rent games. Beer and games. Yeah. And like, uh, it was great. It was a really awesome place. All their like cocktails were video game themed and everything. That's the only place I ever played it. So I never really got really far. I played like maybe three hours of it. But I wasn't hurt over that one. I wasn't. Because the previous Diablos were only PC. Oh, I see. Neither of us were only PC gamers. It was delayed uh, allegedly for eleven years. Really? So wow. I, I hope no. Well, I feel sorry for those that. for those for those folks that uh, waited that long for that game. Yeah, it was super fun. They they pulled it off for sure. Yeah, I guess the most famous one is Duke Nukem Forever, which was delayed for fifteen years. Fifteen years? Yeah, and I guess that I game's mean... terrible too. <laughs> It's really I never bad. played it, but when I look it up, like, before we started this uh, segment, when I looked up, like, delayed games, that was always the number one. Super famous for being delayed for so long. I think, I'm looking it up now, I think Gearbox uh, published that, who, and Gearbox does the Borderlands games and Tiny Tina that I just talked about. You said Duke Nukem Forever? Right? Yeah. Yeah, Gearbox software. Uh, the thing with Gearbox, I love you, Gearbox, but everything you make sucks besides Borderlands. Because <laughs> they did, like, an alien, uh, you know, from the movie Alien. They did, like, Alien Colonial Marine. It, I've never played Duke Nukem Forever, so don't. I, I don't feel the disappointment. It's like a bro game, and they took it too far. Like, I don't know. Just fair crappy humor and dude bro. Mm. Dude bro stuff. Gotcha. Little, leaned into it a little too much. Well, the last one here that I have is Final Fantasy XV. I don't have the dates on it, but I do remember, like, what's really weird for me about Final Fantasy XV, I remember this very well. When I was a freshman in high school, uh, they announced a game called Final Fantasy XIII Versus, mm -hmm. which was XV. Yeah. And my friends didn't fucking believe me. <laughs> and I was like, because XIII was, the gameplay sucked, but we all loved the characters. Yeah. And... I was, and like, it essentially it was the same world, new gameplay, new characters. So we're talking Final Fantasy 13, like on three. So, uh, oh, no, the original 13. Uh, wait. Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to decipher. So, so not 13 with lightning. Yeah. So, so Final Fantasy 13 with lightning. And then there was like 13 do and 13 whatever yeah. lightning returns. But uh, they announced Final Fantasy 13 versus, which was supposed to be. The same, set in the same world as Final Fantasy XIII several years later, which was soon they would just turn it into Final Fantasy XV. So when they announced it, it still had the same Noctis, like the same protagonist, the same mm -hmm. trailer, all that, but it was set in the same world as XIII. Just didn't have lightning and all them in it. And right. maybe they would have if they had kept it that way as like little like Easter eggs or whatever. Uh, but... Yeah, they announced it as Final Fantasy Thirteen Versus, and I told all my friends about it, and nobody believed me. And I was like, I, I saw the trailer, then I questioned myself, and then years passed. I mean, years before they were like, oh, actually this game is going to be Final Fantasy Fifteen Because at that point, they had done Fourteen, all the online stuff, yep. and then they were like, well, we'll just turn it into Fifteen, And that took a long time, because Fifteen came out, well, I don't know when it came out, I played it <laughs> seven years later <laughs> i played it when i was uh in college well into college do you play 14 14 is the online one right yeah i have it but i haven't played it yet because people when they still came out, play the hell out of it well when they came out with the expansion the servers were so packed we couldn't get on me and me and natasha zach and then our friends matt and zach wanted to play it and we bought it, we bought everything for it, and then the expansion came out right when we bought the original, and the servers were too packed, we couldn't get on, it was like a three hour wait time. Hmm. So we're just waiting to play 14 still. You guys in the delay. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's people out there playing that. We are. The for delay. sure. For years. Okay, so it came out in 2016, damn. Uh, yeah, just cool, six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I played it, I think I played it in 2018, so it's not too bad, two years later, but I, the game was announced when I was a freshman in high school, which had to be 
like 2010. Yeah. So it took like six years before they got the game out and the game just kept changing and the plot, I, the plot, I don't know if the plot changed, but they just kept pushing it back and it's okay. <laughs> well, it's better than Duke Nukem. <laughs> Or what was it? Last Guardian? <laughs> so I it's mean, better than those. It, like, it's not super memorable as far as, like, Final Fantasy X and seven and twelve, And, like, I, those games will always, like, I'll just remember every piece of that game. But fifteen was, like, a lot of driving. You could, like, cook. Take pictures. Yeah. So, kind of like Final Fantasy, was Kingdom Hearts delayed? Or did it just take it forever to come out? I think it just took forever. Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3. I mean, luckily they fed us with tons of content in between. Yeah, but the prologue. And, yeah, uh, the 2.8, Rebirth, By Sleep, Chain of Memories. Yeah, all these in-between things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so did it live up to the hype? Which one? Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm, no. No? I'm going to say no. I think... The last eight hours of the game were good, but not what it could have been. I don't think they chose the right worlds or the right Disney Well, universes. the Frozen world was stupid. Yeah, I think that was just terrible. them trying to throw that in because they knew people loved Frozen. Yeah, that's the it Little Mermaid of, the, of Kingdom Hearts yes, 3. Yes, yeah. totally agree. I think the Toy Story world and the Monsters, Inc. world were fantastic. And the mm -hmm. Tangled... I, I actually really liked the other worlds. It was just Frozen that I really didn't like. Yeah. What made Kingdom Hearts 2 so good was that you were seeing, like, Mickey and Goofy get the shit beat out of them in, like, Mulan's world. Yeah. Like, it, that didn't really happen in the third game. It was like, here is... Toy Story, let's yeah. have fun, and then here is Tangled, and you don't really get any plot that's really Kingdom Hearts until you go to the final world, yeah, and then I it's agree. all thrown at you, and I think that we were very loyal fans for a long time, and I was kind of disappointed. I still cried. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. That means a lot. I still cried, but yeah. It's hard uh, to look at the, what's it called, Keyblade Graveyard? Yeah. Not get a little, uh, where's this going and yeah. who have I lost? And yeah, and I'm like deeply, madly in love with Aqua. So, like, all she I have needs to her do... own game, honestly. Yeah, I think we had this conversation before that they don't need to make a Kingdom Hearts 4. Of course, they're not going to for <laughs> 20 years anyway, and they're just going to make spin offs, which is what I'm going to mention is that they should just make. I, I, I'd love to see an Aqua game and yes. I'd love to see a Riku game. Yes, I totally like agree. deep dive, full. Retail, what I would cost, love that. whatever AAA I mean, versions. Two point eight, where you play Aqua, it's only like what three, four hours. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. It was so good. Yeah. She, I love her. I love that she's like the badass woman of the series. I love her voice. I love the way she looks. <laughs> you just love everything about her. I love her, Aqua. If you're out there, have you ever cosplayed as her? I have. That was actually my very first cosplay. Me and my friend Matt, he was Ventus and I was Aqua. Nice. We bought them on Etsy and wore them to Anime Central. Like I don't think I've seen that. You're going to have to post that too. I'll have to find that. We were little babies. Yeah. So overall, how do you feel about game delays? I am always fine with them because I play games years later anyway. And I would... I, under, I don't work in the gaming industry, but I do art. I make art, I like mm -hmm. to say. But so I like I understand that creating something worthwhile takes time. If there's a delay so that the product is better, that's totally worth it in my opinion. And that's totally fine. I mean, video games are not imperative to my life either. I love playing them, but there's always another game I can play yeah. so that a video game designer can get eight hours of sleep or whatever they need to do. Right. It's totally fine. Yeah, I feel the same exact way. <clears throat> and I think most people would. Um, they'll take a finished product over, you know, what happened to Cyberpunk or, you know, something broken. Yeah. Um, just to meet a promise. I also don't understand why they announce games so far out sometimes. Yeah. Like, they're like, hey, here's this thing um, that you're going to love. It's going to be out in 18 months, you know. Yeah. It's going to be out, you know, year and a half from now. And 
I don't know how that helps sales. I don't know. I don't know what that does. Yeah. Um, I understand marketing strategies and stuff like that, but I really don't think that push needs to exist until man, six months or less before yeah. the game comes out. You can get people excited for that stuff. Um, so game delays, you know, they are what they are, but I'll, t I'll take the product when it's done. Like you said, there's other games to play. Luck well, and luckily for us, the, we can afford to play multiple games, I guess, too. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else on game delays? That is my <clears throat> whole list. Thank you, IGN, for the list. Man, Jordan was up in here. He wants Alyssa's bag. I had to move it above the refrigerator. So Jordan's my cat. We haven't mentioned my cat yet. We Aww, talked about your birds. The best cat. Could have been cats and swords. <laughs> um, birds, cats, and swords. Yeah, anything that's uh, foreign to his home here, he has he has to get up uh, get up on. Um, okay. Well, thanks for spending the time with us uh, tonight, or this morning, or this afternoon, or however you are listening to us. We appreciate it. Be sure to be active in the Facebook group. Uh, we really, really love that. Um, getting the feedback, sharing memes. Um, feel free to share what you want to hear us talking about. Uh, we were talking about that earlier, kind of the roadmap of what the next kind of few episodes uh, would be like. We'd love to hear your guys' ideas and what you guys want to hear because we're doing it all for you, right? Yeah. So have a good night, morning, and afternoon, everybody, and we will talk to you all soon. Hey, this is...